As you know, I love to show tips on video editing for social video, and today I'm going to share four cool square video designs and a heap of tips to make your Instagram videos more captivating. In fact, these designs are great for square video, whether you're creating for Instagram or Facebook. You can see many of these design concepts I share execute in videos created by people like Gary V. Gary has an awesome team of creators that keep pushing the envelope. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Okay, to start things off, we're going to look at some examples of Gary V Instagram video designs to get some cool tips. And then after we go through these first few examples, we're going to then take a dive into some real cool visual designs that I created based on a lot of these principles. In this first picture, we can see here that we have nice big bold text with drop shadows to show nice contrast against the pale blue background. So it's important where you can when you're using border solutions like this to have nice standout text. You can see there's also an at Gary V. This is his handle in Instagram. So this is important for shareability. So this is a good thing to do if you want to have others discover you on Instagram based on how you share out your videos. There's a progress bar, which is uh, something I talked about in a previous video, how to do four varieties of this. So if you want to check that out, just click on the uh, information in the card or in the description below. You also see down here, we have text and the text that Gary's using is something that's cycling through the speech, the narration. So you could do this as closed captions, or in this case, they've done it as text that will, you know, go on uh, each sentence at a time. Now you can see here that the this is more like your standard square video where we have in the middle a 16 by 9 widescreen uh, shaped video repurposed inside this square. So this is a common practice with these kind of borders. We also have an emoji, which is kind of cool because it just adds another interesting flair to to the to the visual. And you can animate things like emojis or you can just leave them in static. It's up to you. In this next picture, I want to just point out a couple of things. Notice how the black border goes all the way around and the picture is more inlaid and it's not out to the edges. So you can see there's a much smaller footprint used for the actual video component and there's more real estate dedicated to the title. So you can see how nice the white text looks against the black and as well the inverse with a rectangle, a white rectangle in the back and the black text on top. So lots of cool techniques with the text and again this is a static title that stays and then on the bottom again the talking narration details are shown as he, he's talking throughout the video in this next sample this is a little video clip i have in here he uses what i call the word blast technique and i think it's kind of cool because i'm just going to play this here for you to see it when you put pressure on bullshit so as you can see, it blasted the words one, two, three, four. It even had the color red in there. And then it printed the, the whole effect at the end, meaning the whole title again. So it's very cool because it's visually impacting and startling. In this next picture, we now see a very interesting concept for design. We see very little space is devoted to use for the video. And I'd say about two thirds of the screen has this nice blue background. We have a nice white inlay uh, border that you see here this very thin thin uh, thin line and then we have a list and the list is a common way to communicate messaging and it's great for instagram or facebook square video so here he uses five rules to win the day and then you can see things are nicely listed there you can animate these things they look really cool and it's an, a nice interesting way for a design in this next picture we see a split screen concept here. So the video is on the left and as you can see it's not zoomed in too close so you see most of uh, you know Gary's upper body and his face and you know his, his eyes are nicely located in a rule of thirds concept on, on this uh, visual. And then on the right side we have the text and the text could be static with just one 
one message that he's conveying overall. In, the, in this case, it's showing a quote for him, but it can also have the ongoing narration. In this next image, it's zoomed in. So you need to be thinking about whether you should be zoomed in, zoomed out, and all that depends on how you want to utilize the space and what kind of messaging that you want to put on to fill the space and support the narrative. In this next image, you can see there's a more prominent banner or border. It has a nice uh, image with the, the skull and showing the bottle of poison, and that shows nicely. So whether you're using emojis or icons or vectors, it's a great addition to spice up the video look. Below that, we can see the video component occupying near two-thirds of the space has Gary. This has more of a zoomed out look, not zoomed in, because there's someone in there in the picture with him. And you can see, you know, this is a decision made in, in how you're framing things to go inside your square video. Okay, so now let's dive into the video designs. The video designs are all based around the same video clip. And this is a time-lapse clip I've got. It's a 16 by 9 clip. I'm using it to show someone doing some planning and working at the computer to enter data. As you can see, it's time-lapse lapse, fast speed. Here's the first design. So let's play that and get a feel for it. So there are many cool features in this video and it's just 15 seconds long works great for instagram or for facebook first of all as you can see it's a tips of video we have a nice bold uh we have nice bold lettering with some drop shadow effect there our 16 by 9 uh, video clip fits nicely inside the square after we scaled it down and then as you can see we get into the messaging with our points across the bottom where point one, start the plan the night before, set priorities. And these are all animated elements with fade, fading in and fading out. So it's pretty cool. And these are all made inside Camtasia. So you can see the elements here. The bottom layer is the soundtrack with fading in and fading out on the ends. Then we have the shape. That's the, the um, colored background here that sort of complements the video. Then the next layer is the video clip itself, as you can see on top of the rectangle shape. And then above that is the title text. And in the title text, we're using a, the, what's called the reveal animated behavior, which has an in reveal during none and an out, it does a fade out. So as you can see, when it comes in through the reveal, it slides in a bit from the right hand side and then does nothing throughout. And then at the end, it sort of fades out like all the rest of the elements do. But aside from the text at the top, that stays. So you can see the length of that uh, component here is the full length of the, the video clip. But then we have three separate text elements here that all are, are synced to, uh, to go one after the other. And each one has been approximated to be the same length and timed. Approximately each runs for about four seconds for timing. And these again also use the reveal animation for consistency. So when you see here, I click on the reveal. In the end, this time it's coming from the left. The during is empty, nothing going on there, and then fade out. And that same principle is applied across on each of these text elements. And in addition, you see the circle in the front with the number. The same behaviors are used, but I have this grouped because there's a circle shape here. As you can see the circle and the, and the number one and they're grouped so that I could manage the scaling with proportionally and uh, change that up if I wanted to without putting things out of sync. So as you can see this was you know pretty straightforward and a lot of interesting features and elements. This is again based on a basic design for using a 16 by 9 inlay. Now let's go on to the next design. Now let's take a peek at video design number two. So 
So video design number two is pretty cool. It utilizes that list approach with a nice title with drop shadow, a line put underneath, and then we have each of the line message points coming one after the other, staying on for the duration. Now let's just take a little closer look at the details. So if we dive in here, first off, you're going to see here that we have those bullet points and the text point pieces. So those are all here in pairs. So there's three pairs of them, as you can see. And as you, as you can see, when we put the first one on display, which is this pair, it has the longest duration because it stays on screen. Then the next, the next pair comes on. And then finally, the last pair. These are all designed the same way as in the last video. So there's no point to go through these things because the same, same circle with the number inside and the same kind of um, process that was used for showing them, which was through the reveal. Okay. And let's focus now down on what makes this different. So one of those differences was that the text pieces are varying length, but they all stay on to the end. Okay. So that's the pieces that come down in the text below, right? those three pieces. And then we have another added cool feature, which is the sketch motion. So as you can see here in Camtasia, we have the ability to draw in a square to, to bring into the, onto the screen. And with the sketch motion here, you're going to see it come on. See, well, it shows in a flash. And ironically, that's because the draw time is very quick. And I'm going to show you here. So you could see how it drew in there. We have here draw time. It's set at a, a, a two and the thickness of the line is five. So it's not very thick, but that's a nice added feature. And then we have a fade in that's for about one second and 10 frames. So that's this nice little sketch motion box that we put in there to add a nice element. Then we have the, te the text coming in here with the title and then the line accent underneath. And then as you saw, we talked about the text before. So something else to, to be mindful of is the video. And if we look at the clip here, you can see it's not the full 16 by nine, it's been trimmed back. And if we actually put here to the crop setting, we can actually see that this was actually somewhat larger before. If we move that around, you can see so. We, we trimmed it to be able to accommodate this video design and put that in. So it looks quite nice. Now let's take a look at the third design. So as you can see, a lot of these designs that we're showing here are derivatives off the styles that we saw in the Gary V pictures that we looked at in the beginning for tips. And um, to one thing that characterizes this one right off, you can tell is the video component. It takes one half of the side here and with the setting still on crop here, you can see what I did. I actually, I'm going to show you how much I actually trimmed this video down to a section right in the center, which I thought was adequate enough to, to get the message across with the time-lapse info that we're showing here. So as you can see, it goes through, it shows a nice amount of detail, and you can even see the hands doing the work. So that works nice and sufficient, and that video clip goes for the length. Let's get the scale back to fit, and then there we have the shape, and the shape this time is only half size. It's covering just half of our uh, side. And then we have a line accent in the middle here and then followed by the white shape inside. And we put that in to help contrast with the text so that the black shows nicely against a white background. We saw that effect earlier when we saw nice bold text against a rectangular background. Well, here we're using it on a little larger scale and then everything is using the same kind of reveal property to slide in from the right as you can see right sliding in from the right on the in the reveal and then on the out it's a fade out so we've kind of been consistent in that approach across the examples that we're showing here now 
something to note is again we're in a scenario where here's the title piece it only goes for a certain length of time and then we have each of the text pieces following in sequence with a tiny bit extra time at the end for the last one I put in. Now let's take a look at our fourth design. This one's my favorite. It features the blur effect. What I really like about this is you can see how the hands get magnified. It works really well as a blur effect. So let's just look into the details a bit here. So first off, as you can see, the text components along the bottom there are very similar to some of the designs we did before. So they just appear with the circle and the number one after another. Okay, so we don't need to revisit how those were made because we already went through that. Next up, if we come down, Below that, okay, we see that there's the text at the top, so it's there now with a drop shadow, but it seems to show nicely enough, even though there's a variety of colors and textures going on there, it still shows sufficiently. Then underneath that is the vertical video, which we see right here, a 1080 by 1920 vertical version, so I focused on the 1920 by 1080 in and made a vertical piece so that you can see how we would be doing this to bring this in. Now to get the blur effect, I'm going to show you first off, I'm going to eliminate out of the picture there, the vertical video, I'm going to eliminate the blur. And then under the line you see is the track here, which is filling the full 1080p by 1080p. But if we look more closely, you can see that it's really just the vertical video, which again was here. It's just the vertical video scaled up. So as you saw when we put the vertical video in the middle, it fit here. All we did to get this, the underlying part to work with the blur, was grab the ends, get it to snap to the grid, and then we have our nice piece underneath. Then we added a blur layer on top, the blur layer we made to fit the full canvas. So you can see that here, it's just made to fit the canvas. Then above that, we bring back in the vertical video piece, and that's it. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share with anyone you know who may benefit from it. And of course, remember to subscribe if you enjoy the content I produce to learn more great tips on video editing for social videos. Be sure to click on the link for the playlist featured on this page, or click on the link in the video description below. And if you need any assistance with editing or producing your videos, be sure to reach out to me through my website, gordeisman.com. See you in another video soon.